You know, how do you handle the heat? You know what I'm saying? You know, even at the beach, listen, even at the beach, if you're laying there on the beach and you're getting your rear end burned, listen to me, unless you make a decision to get up off the beach, you're going to get burned. Is that true? Say it. you got to make a decision. And even though you hate leaving, it's so pretty, though. I don't want to leave. But you're getting burned up. Okay? But once you start to leave, you're going to get a peace, and you're going to be glad that you made the decision you made, and you can come back for another day. Amen? Do it again. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about how to handle the heat. Let's look at it. Let's move on. What do you do when the heat gets turned up? What do you do when the heat gets turned up? I mean when problems come in your life. When adversity comes into your life. What do you do when you're in that pressure cooker? When the things are just hot, man. We ain't talking about no beach. We're talking about my life here. What do you do when the heat gets turned up? And today's message, how to handle the heat. Can you say that with me? Come on. Don't go to sleep on me. How to handle the heat. Some of you seen the beach and you're already taking a siesta. Give me a break. Come on. How to handle the heat. That's what we're talking about today. Let's keep moving, right? Let's put in the warp speed there and see what we can do. 1 Peter 5.8, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Read it with me. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may what? Devour. Eat your lunch. That's what he wants to do. He wants to devour you. So what do you do when he's attacking you? What do you do when these problems and troubles and crises come into your life? How do you handle the heat, man? John 10.10, 10, great verse. Starts out with sort of an ugly part. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But hallelujah, Jesus said, I'm coming that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. But problems are going to come. Do you know that saying? Am I like just like you're telling me something? I already know, preacher man. Okay? But problems are going to come. But how do you handle those hot times in your life? Because they're going to happen. Troubles are going to get there in your life. Let's keep moving. Now look, I'm not talking about troubles of your own making though today. I'm not talking about a preacher... Man, I've been smoking this stuff and I get lightheaded. Yeah, you know, it's going to happen, okay? You smoke stuff, you drink stuff, you act like a fool, you run around with women, let me tell you something, and, you, and you're mad because your wife came after you with a butcher knife? That's your problem, ain't my problem, amen? That's not what I'm talking about, being an absolute idiot and problems coming, oh, church, pray for me. That ain't what I'm talking about. See, Satan's already got you, baby. I'm talking about when you're trying to do the right thing. Are you hearing me say? Trying to work hard, trying to do the right thing. Not perfect, that's for sure. But you're trying to do the right thing. And attacks come in your life. And the heat gets turned up. How do you handle it? That's what we're going to talk about today. What do you do when doing right costs you? What do you do when doing right costs? Why, well, just don't do it then. Is that how you feel? Hope not. What do you do when doing right costs Let's see a show of hands. Has doing right ever cost anybody in the building? Let me see your hands. Come on. Doing right ever cost? I mean, it might cost you a job. Might cost you some money. Might cost you some humbling yourself. Who knows what it's going to cost you? You know? Might cost you having to do some serious praying and forgiving somebody. Might cost you something. Okay? What do you do when doing right costs you? How do you handle the heat? 1 Peter 2, the Bible says, and we're getting somewhere, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. This is a good thing, believe it or not. When you suffer, you did the right thing and you suffer for it because God gets the glory. He can get the glory in situations like that. And that's how He gets a lot of His glory. For what glory is it though? When you're buffeted for your own faults and you take it patiently. That's no big deal. You got yourself in a big jam and, and you're taking it patiently. Well, it was your fault. Okay? Stop doing that crazy mess. All right? So what good is that? But if when you do well, if when you do well, you suffer for it, that's a good thing. That's acceptable with God. For even here unto where you call, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in His steps. Okay? So that's what we're talking about today. Suffering or facing adversity, the heat is turned up, and you're trying to do the right thing. Amen? How many been there? Come on, one more time. You've been there. Maybe some of you are there right now. Pastor, I'm trying to keep this marriage together. I'm trying to do the right thing. It's killing me. Maybe that's where you're at. I don't know what your situation is. I'm trying to hang in there at the job. I'm trying to do the right thing. 
I'm trying to hang solid. I mean, my kids, is, they're out there somewhere, and it's just killing me, preacher. Maybe, I don't know what the situation is for you. But it's definitely hot when you get in that jam. Let's keep looking. And it's going to happen all the time. Satan hates your guts. He hates my guts. He's going to dog our heels. And, and one, you know, listen, for example, in marriage, if you look at somebody else's marriage and you go, well, why can't my marriage be like that? My marriage, you know, listen, you don't even know what they're going through. And the bottom line, if Satan's dogging your heels, you stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. Make it work. Do the best you can. And it happens. So let's look and see some different things today. Let's go, Raj. That beach scene is making me want to leave early. Don't ever put another beach scene up. Don't ever do that. There are cycles of handling the heat. Can you say that? I really need some help because I'm wore out. Here we go. There are cycles of handling the heat. One more time. There are cycles for handling the heat. Now we're going to give you something today. You can go online tomorrow, later, and, and click on it. You can get this message and a lot more stuff that you can find. Okay? But you're going to see that there are cycles to handling the heat that comes in our life. So let's look at these cycles of heat today. So how do we handle it? We go to the book of Daniel today. If you have your Bible, go to the book of Daniel. It's going to be on the big screen. Last week we looked at Isaiah. He was a prophet. This week we're looking at Daniel. So let's see what happens in the book of Daniel. Matter of fact, we're going to take a couple of weeks. We're going to take a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about how to handle the heat. Okay? Because that's a hot subject. So we're going to talk about it a couple of weeks. How to handle the heat. Let's look at it. Verse 1. The book of Daniel. Let's look at the heat that came in this guy's life. This is why God gave us the word. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he besieged it. He took it over. Okay? And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, into Nebuchadnezzar's hand, with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So Nebuchadnezzar came in, defeated Jerusalem, and took these treasures back to the house of false gods. Verse 3. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes. He told this guy, you pick special uh, people that you have... Uh, that you have uh, captured and made slaves, and you bring some of them to me, but only the best. Children in whom was no blemish. This is Neb talking. Well favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such had ability of them to stand in the king's palace, of whom they might what? Say that with me. Teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's keep moving. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat and of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end there they might stand before the king. Put them on a special diet. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. He changed their names. He gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar. Hananiah, now we've heard of these dudes. Look, Shadrach. Mishael became Meshach. And Azariah became who? Abednego. So there you got Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many heard of these dudes? Let me see your hand. Okay, good. So you're with me. Some of you are with me. And that's all right. If you hadn't heard, that's why you're here today. To hear the Bible, to learn. Okay? So let's look. How do you handle the heat? First of all, there's got to be a problem. Okay? There's got to be a problem. If you've got heat, if you've got Satan coming against you, there's a problem. Hello, NASA, we can't lift off. Got a problem, okay? There's a problem. What was the problem in our story today? Let's look at it. Here's the problem. Jerusalem was conquered. Let's just fly around. Jerusalem was conquered. These four young men were specifically selected to be slaves in the king's palace. Who are they again? Daniel, let's use their changed name. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Isn't it funny that Daniel's name didn't stick, Belteshazzar? The poor old Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ain't never been remembered for who it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they ain't checked in the way. There they are. Good grief. It ain't fair. They were going to be brainwashed with the Babylonian culture and the language. So here their, their country is, is defeated, besieged. They're taken prisoner. They're slaves. And you think you got problems? Okay. Their names have been changed. They're being brainwashed. With this culture and with this language, you think they like that? Say, you think they hated that with everything inside of their guts or what? Sure they did. They were given these Babylonian names. Next. 
They were to eat the king's Babylonian meat. So there's all the problems. We see a bunch of problems that are happening. Did they deserve this? Yes or no? Say, somebody tell me. Huh? Did they deserve to have to go through this? We come, in, we come to find out these are good guys. They were men who loved the Lord. And so stuff's going to happen in your life. If you've got this idea that Satan ain't going to come against me, I'm never going to have any problems, that's why the church is like a revolving door. Oh, I felt good. That Jesus. And then another problem comes. Oh, where did Jesus go? And we just quit, man. That's not reality. Problem's going to come. When you become a Christian, you don't get no halo. It ain't happened. You got some problems. These guys were great guys and they had problems. So the heat's going to come. And you know what? They couldn't stop these things that happened to them. But they could choose to eat or not to eat. Did you know that? That's about all they could do, isn't it? So, they could choose that their country was defeated. They couldn't choose that they were taking slaves. They couldn't, they couldn't choose that they were sitting there and they locked up in the, and they're standing there in the king's palace. They couldn't choose that somebody started to talk to them in a bunch of gibberish in some foreign language, trying to teach them culture and stuff like that. They couldn't do that. But you know what? When they set a plate of meat in front of them, they could choose to eat it or not. Are you hearing me today? Okay? Problem. They've got some problems. They've got adversity. Let's keep looking. Purpose. That's the second cycle when handling the heat. First of all, is the obvious. The problem. Okay, you got that? That's easy. How do I handle the heat? Purpose. But Daniel, read that with me. But Daniel, what? Purpose in his heart that he would not what? Defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. How do I handle the heat, preacher man? You know what Daniel did? He purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart. If when Satan comes dogging you, and adversity comes into your life, and problems come into your life, you know what? You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a decision. And you're going to have to be determined. And that's what Daniel was. He was determined. Let's look at it. Why not eat it? Why not eat it, boy? Why not eat it? Daniel, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it, guys? Why not eat this meat? Well, the meat probably had been sacrificed to false gods. He wasn't going to eat it. And you might say, well, that's no big deal to you. Well, that's you. Big deal to him, right? Look at this. Why not eat it? The food was probably prohibited in the law of Moses. You can check it out some of Leviticus 11. It was probably prohibited food for him to eat anyway. And you know, they might have determined in their heart, you know, no matter what they put us through, we're going to try our best to keep God's law. We're going to try our best to do the right thing. Purpose. And that's what we've got to do when we're facing adversity. Why not eat it? It probably, they probably had made a sacred vow to the Lord. They had probably said that certain things they would not eat because God's Word said it. They might have even gone an extra mile and said because we're Christians, we're just not going to partake in that. That's just the way it is. This is a vow we made to the Lord. How are you in your vows and commitments to the Lord? When problems come and little adversity comes, is that when they fly out the window? You commit, you're serious about your commitment to Jesus Christ. You hear me today. What do you do when things get heated up? What do you do when the, when the burner starts burning you a little bit? Satan comes dogging you. You need to have purpose. Here's what they did. Say that with me. They chose to do what was right. Help me. Come on now. One more time. They chose to do what was right. Right. Problems. Choose to do what's right. Let's keep moving around. That's what you do when the heat is, is on. You keep the next turn. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. That's what, you know, I have the heat on in my life many times. I may say you just dogged your heels. Well, let me see your hands. Come on. He's dogged your heels, problems in your life. And have you been tempted to not do the right thing? I've been tempted as a pastor many times to quit, to quit, to quit. To quit. To quit. I got one preacher friend. He calls me and he says, Gary, I quit every Monday. He said, but I ain't left yet. I've been here 20 years. He said, but I quit every Monday. You know, and that, you know how you feel sometimes. But you know, you just must muster up the strength in the Holy Spirit and just do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Do the right thing. That matters. That's what made America great, by the way. Praise the Lord. Do the right thing. When problems come, anybody can take a cakewalk when it's fall and the sun ain't shining too bright. You can go, well, I laid on the beach all day. Well, big Harry Dale. 
Okay? Some one need out hardly. Okay? But it's when the heat's really on, they're doing the right thing. 